Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV, Plus Sport. As usual, you know when it's time for Plus Sports, it's always time to know what's going on in the world of sport. And we know so about time we've been following us on all our social media platforms, you know that we give you not just um, any sport. So if now is another time of the day where you ought to know what's going on in the world of sport. We know on Saturday is um, the qualifiers where Nigeria will be playing with um, can um Bene Republic we lost the first leg two one. Um Bene being led by our former coach Ganachua came from a zero down to, you know, give a devastating defeat to the former coach that's talking about Fini the judge. So there have been so much since the first time and now has happened with coach, no coach and all that issues. Now we have um the technical director Augustine Iguavon, who was one of the best generations of defenders Nigeria ever had, that will be taking us. And he's going to be in Uyo. And also, we'll be looking at the transfer saga that has to do with um, Victor Osime. I'll be doing this alone. I have you watching from your comfort zone. And I also have um, a sport administrator who has done so well in the development of sports in Lagos and beyond, talking about um, Henry Wanya. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Modashi. Yes, sir. It's not just him here. Like you can see, I have um, a very young, talented player. He's um, a Nigerian Spanish um, player who has done so well for himself. Still has a future um, ahead of him. Talking about Joel Og. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I, this is your first time of coming to Nigeria. Yes. Uh, okay, you share the experience of how you see Nigeria um, later on the program. But let's go straight to you, um, Henry. It, it interesting program coming on Saturday. The world is waiting for Austin Guavon. He's third time lucky, you know. He's a very, very lucky man to take the Super Eagles to what should be um, an unbelievable position to see whether he can do um, what is expected of him. What should we be expecting on Saturday against um, Bene Republic, knowing that um, we are second to the last on the lock table? Yeah, it's going to be a serious business. Mm. Uh, from our own angle, that is talking about the Super Eagles. Um, looking at the man that will be at the helm of affairs, uh, the technical director, uh, Austin Bravo, is well experienced. He understands the situation where we are. Uh, after the whole saga, uh, losing against Bene Republic. And uh, of course, the players as well uh, have been instructed there as well know that this is going to be a serious business and uh, we are a serious business because um, we need to qualify not just for the AFCON we need to qualify uh, the qualification will also lead us for the World Cup so in 2026 and then AFCON for 2025 so this is a serious business and the coaches on ground, both the assistant coaches that have been called up to assist in this particular uh, tournament, you know, uh, they are all well experienced. They are all Nigerians. They understand that uh, this is a patriotic call. Mm. It's a Korean call, not like um, uh, just go there and uh, do your job. So it's a job that everybody is looking at. Okay, the the entire country is interested in Saturday's game. And for Bene to beat us, call it revenge, we are coming for revenge or we are coming to take back our position, whatever it is, it is a must win for okay. us. And uh, from what we have seen on ground, I think the team is ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we are praying that um, let them maintain uh, the code of conduct, especially from the angle of players. At the time, some of us have been angry. Uh, regarding late uh, some players that are uh, usually late mm. and this time around we see them coming late so we don't actually want that we want them to be early so that they can be able to you know form a very strong team you know work together as a team and be able to give us the result we want what we want on saturday is result mm. there's no story no excuse and we are hoping that saturday will be for nigeria yeah it's also good to remind you i remind that viewers out there that um this match it's something interesting we uh, we lose this match we'll probably not see ourselves mm. in the next time um, tournament and let's look at the equatorial guinea um Benin republic defeating us 2-1 don't you think they also have 
a, a, a kind of um, plan to ensure that um, women are away because Ghana Joel has so much of our knowledge he has done so. We are taking us to the, I think, the third place of, um, of the Nations Cup before. He has qualified us to the World Cup before. And I think in and out of the Super Eagles, there's none of the players that is, um, that is a novice to him, to his understanding. So Ghana Joel probably have an upper hand because, you know, I don't think Guavua has that knowledgeable have that knowledge of who our opponent is. I'm just saying that I don't know whether they must have done anything about that. But I think looking on paper, Ganacho, Benin Republic defeated us 2-1. Ganacho has done so much with the Super Eagles. Don't you think this might end up being a defeat? No, not at all, Mudashitu. The reason is this. Yes, Ganacho knows us to an extent. A very good extent. Yes, yeah, say, say good extent, but what is going to happen is just the spirit of Nigeria. We need to come up and show that we can do something. Okay? And not just doing something, we need to tactically defeat whatever plan that he has. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, we are going to, uh, the coaching crew, of course, they are going to look at their game properly. They also, the same way he knows us, we also know him. Okay. Even the players as well, we also know him. We, at least he has been with our players, talking to them in the dressing room. Please, this is what you need to do. Do this, do this. And of course, he must have found himself in similar condition when he was with our players. And some of the things he told them, of course, we are going to uh, analyze it from that angle. This is what he's going to tell the uh, Bene Republic players. Please, you must do this. Uh, look at this player. Mark him. Make sure you don't allow him to you know, uh, have some pairs over you, this and that. We understand all that. But practically, we are going to try as much as we can to overcome whatever he's going to bring on board. And I can tell you, take it from me, he's not going to succeed this time around. Yeah, I'm sure that's the hope of all Nigerians that um, Ghana Troy and Bene Republic will not sort this time around. But you also know that they also have their plans, their plan A on how to maneuver their way. If mm -hmm. you can get 2-1 away, because that um, the first um, win was pop up on, on the neutral ground, not even at home in, in, in Bene. Uh, now they're coming back here to do something who who we know Ghana sure know so much about that, that field. But let's put that aside. The two coaches that have been added to the squad, talking about Fidel is a he has won with any go Rangers. Yeah. We know what he did with um, MFM mm. for several years and he has been experienced he has is an experienced coach. Mm. Now we have Daniel Oguma the day from uh, Real Monsters, yeah. very fantastic um, coach. He has been in the calf Champions League before with Remo, and I think they're still um, in this same season too. So, so what do you think those two coaches we add on, we add to the existing coaching crew that um, that is going to be led by um, the man they call um, Cicero? Yeah, um, you see, these two coaches, just like you analyze them, they are sound coaches. They are one of the, when you talk about the best we have in the country, they are uh, Dan and um, Fidelis. Uh, Fidelis, they are sound coaches and I know that they are going to help to bring on table part of the uh, food we are going to feed Bene Republic, especially uh, Gennett Raw. So we want him, we want to disappoint him this time around, okay? Uh, knowing us to that extent, you know, is not, is not enough for him. I think uh, it's high time uh, people need to understand that this is going to be a Nigerian affair. Mm. There's no foreign person with us. Mm. So we are doing it our own way. And I can tell you when Nigerians bring out their spirit and say, we, ha we have put this as a challenge to them. They all know. Guavo, uh, Felix, uh, uh, Daniel, they all know the, the, they are on hot seat. Mm -hmm. And not only them, the players as well. So it's becoming so disappointing to us and embarrassing as well. So this time around, apart from making sure we are able to seal up that embarrassment, we also want to take our place to make sure we qualify for the AFCOM and also we qualify for the World Cup. Okay, now let's look at um, the man called Cicero Osine Guavon. Let's look at the last time he was a coach of the Super Eagles and let's start to determine 
what his future will be. We don't know what the contract is, but we know that he's there on the interim basis. The last time he, called, he that qualified us to the Nations Cup, he did so well, won the three matches in the Nations Cup. In that, the, I think the two previ um, previous Nations Cup, and he lost out in the round of 16. And we we're looking for a coach. That brought about um, our last um, coach before finishing the job. Yeah. What, what do you think should be his fate? After this nation, if he wins and takes us out, do you think we should retain him as a coach of um, the Super Eagles or the search should continue for a foreign coach? And that foreign coach was the reason why our own, one of the former best seven in the world, talking about Finito, resigned. What do you think should happen after awards if eventually um, Austin Guavon um, do the job as expected? Yeah, you know, um, we, as I said before now, we have been saying this always. We need to start believing in ourselves as a country. We have what it takes. We have those who can actually bring this country where they're supposed to be. I'm not also saying that it's wrong to have a foreign coach. We also understand that sometimes, you know, the pressures, especially some political pressures and uh, some other pressures also coming from the players, sometimes lead us to unnecessary uh, step or putting our team in state of limbo we know that these things have been happening you know so but from my own angle from what i have seen is that if a, a guavo happens to uh, save us from this uh, uh, corner we are he has great chance mm. you know of leading the team even if he's not the one to be the head coach he can still have his position as a technical director but you see sometimes the technical director cannot do everything definitely you know even if he gives some advice there are possibility that the coach will say no okay so um we are seeing i mean we are looking towards a synergy where they can really work together even if we have a new foreign coach who will be coming in to us uh, to be part of the team you know they need to work together the problem we have is not them working together sometimes and not really working as a team to give us the result we have that is one of the major problems. then another problem we have is also from the angle of the players and then we shouldn't also forget the administrative angle which is our nff so they need to come together to see how this trade stakeholders can really work together to give us what we want because nigerians we are spending the money we are doing a lot of things to make sure that uh, our national team is up there and i pray that uh, after this we are going to succeed a guavo and the remaining team will still be there to always be for us well, let's take our mind back a bit i mean to see the audio issue that has to do with um, the, the German, Labat here, yeah, mm. who said that um, the NFF have to be in charge of his tax and all that, mm. that they were not seeing pencil down in Rio in terms of financial um, commitment, and NFF announced that he is a new Super Eagles coach. Amidst all these things and the fact that he has gone back to German, what we we were hoping to get to you to talk on that, but now we have you in the studio. What, what's your what was your own opinion on that? Um, a, a dark you know moment in the NFF history has not been able to get a coach, and they went ahead to announce where there was no further commitment, according to reports. I think uh, there is a for me from what I have seen, there is a kind of a, a misunderstanding among the officials. Okay, or the administrators, because uh, we are all surprised at a time, you know, we are all surprised at a time when uh, he was announced, and the man himself also looked surprised that he had been announced, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we are also hearing about a guavo coming in. So more like there is issue in the house, you know, maybe they must have discussed about this. Then somebody ate out or something. But at the same time, the German coach, for me, uh, looking at his, uh, he's not really the kind of person we need. Okay. Uh, to be sincere, that's not the kind of person we need. Um, looking at his um, uh, profile. Profile. He has never coached a national team. Exactly. Before. So that's not the kind of person we need. So uh, him turning down the offer, giving some excuse, the, yeah. it's okay for us. So we move on. Hmm. Now, talking about moving on, we'll go to our next topic. 
um, away from um, Afcons, we look into our next topic and it has been trending that's talking about um, Osime transfer saga. Uh, <laughs> the internet is just so much um, about about Osime and Victor Osime was supposed to be to Chelsea, was supposed to be in Saudi Arabia. Under all this, we found a home for him in Turkey. So, um, should you have done that? Do you think um, Napoli, because we know in the past, there's been so much about the Napoli, um, Napoli president and black players, uh, because at a certain time, I'm, I'm not saying that the reason, but I know that at a certain time he said um, black players will not go for the Nations Cup, there were issues, then Osimhen missed the Nations Cup and all this issue. So, so, so tell us, tell us, what can you say about the back and forth regarding to the African player of the year, our own top nine, Victor Osimhen? Yeah, I'm happy for Osimhen that uh, finally he was able to get a club um, after the whole uh, saga, you know. It had not been easy uh, for him, especially psychologically, it have really eaten deep on him. And I can tell you he's really strong to be able to pass the, through this stage. So it had been uh, front and back. Uh, will he go to Saudi? Will he go to Chelsea? And this continue until we had this. I think whatever that happens is still for his own success. You know, it's still for his own benefit because at the end of the day, yeah, the contract... All talking about um, the transfer as regards to um, Osime's um, transfer saga. And um, let's not forget that um, it's something we need to know so that um, we get the best out of um, this um, situation. So tell us, as you, what, what do you think? In that transfer clause, he said it's going to be in January. It's going to be still in January and um, you see the, uh, the, the contract is still open. So tell us much about that. Yeah, it, it favors him, the contract favors him because um, um, by January, at least he still have option to move anywhere. The only uh, clause, somehow, a lot of people have been arguing over this uh, regarding um, uh, uh, the one year thing that is involved and the rest of them. So, but whatever that happens is still for the success of uh, Osime and i'm happy that the new club the gala they are also happy with him so we are hoping to see a lot of goals coming from him um turkey is a good place you know where they have uh, good fans and i know that um, he's surely going to you know repeat the same thing that happened in Napo in italy you know same will still happen in uh, turkey so um you know, Turkey. Was that, was that the best option for Osime? Was that the best? Um, was that the best option to go to um, Turkey? Yeah, it that. may not. Uh, looking at his tattoo, uh, the kind of player he is, it may not be the best. But looking at the condition that surround him within this period, so I think that is the only option that okay. is available okay. that makes sense a lot okay. so um, again when you look a lot of people are uh, saying about uh, maybe possibly uh, uh, leaving the Turkey or uh, leaving Chelsea for Saudi Arabia okay. he also have his uh, uh, he must have looked at it critically you know Sorry. with other uh, of his team you know to see the best option for him and I'm happy that uh, he, he made it right with uh, the new club in Turkey. And you can see everybody's happy to welcome him. Okay. And he is also happy as well. Yeah, let, let's, let's don't just take um, the, the, the... Let me, let me come to you, um, Joe. Um, you're, you're a player. You've done so well for... Um, though that you have... Um, your mother is Equatorial Guinea. Your dad is um, a Nigerian. But you're yeah, Spanish, a Nigerian Spanish player. Yes. You've done so well for the under 18 um, Atletico Madrid yes. um, um, team okay. and all that. L let, me, let me just put you on the line, Mike, because I know you want your career to be as successful as that of Osime. Yes. You know, he has got it. What would you have done as a footballer that you are in that situation? Because I learned that he has sacked his agent. I don't know how true that is. But what would you have done if you're Victor Osime? Me, I, I am thinking that if you love football, you need to try and 
you need to try and work hard on your football. Okay. You know? So Ozzy may have difficult situation in Naples and in the last minute, the last transfer in Turkey, he went to Galatasaray. I think for me it's a good decision. Okay. You need to play, you need to you need to be happy, you need to stay in one side that you will know that people playing. like you okay. and you are playing good football. Mm, okay. So instead of him just uh, because you know the coach in um, Italy in Napoli, Conte said it's not part of his plan. It's not part of his plan. So instead of him just staying surplus yeah. without playing mm. and um, you think it's a good decision, he went to Galatasaray. Yes. Okay. Would you have done that if you're in that situation? Yes. Okay, fine. Because okay. If if I have other option before, if the if I try to see or I have other teams, it's normal. I will try to go with other team. But this last minute, that option, Galatasaray is not even bad team. It's, not it's a team. good team. Yeah. So. But well, also information was that the the, the salary that Chelsea intend to give to him was low below. Chelsea and um, Napoli have agreed. It was the personal agreement between. Chelsea and Osime, according to reports, did not go through because of salary. Uh, will you have accepted that salary? Because you also know some people are comparing that a uh, unwanted Ryan Sterling, you understand, yes. went to Arsenal and Chelsea agreed to be paying salary, which is almost 200 and something um, thousand, um, 200 and per week. Yes. Um, and Osime, top nine, the best best African player, mm. want to receive 100 and something um, per week. Will you have gone to Chelsea for a lower salary? And uh, you know your worth to one of the best players yes. in Africa? I think no. Okay. Because um, I know that if I want to go to what one team, I will try to go. Okay. But with my condition and with condition that he will make me fine and the team fine okay no one condition like the team he will come fine and me i am not coming okay. fine you understand okay. even i play football because i love football okay but football is work before it's work yeah that's true so so um before before we go on this quick break let, let, let me let me ask you you will still going to come back to you but let me go straight to you the best decision for osime you think so yeah, uh, because of the tight corner where he is, uh, he has no other option that is better than this option. So he needed to take advantage of that. And that is exactly what he did. Uh, what I like there is at least by uh, January, he should be free. Then mm. he see if he's still playing, scoring his goals, some of this club, post, hopefully Chelsea, will come bigger for him. Okay. And there's still reports that um, Chelsea is still keen. You know, mm. looking at the transfer window yeah. in January. So he has the opportunity now to showcase himself well in the new club in Turkey. You know, giving his best, make sure he scores enough goals and then remain fit. Not only that, score for us in the Nations Cup. Yeah. That would also be, I mean, uh, in our qualifying uh, yeah, in yeah, matches. Saturday. So, yeah, Saturday. So let's do it. Okay. And uh, Chelsea will still come back for him. Not just coming back for him, they will come back big. What, 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 what Chelsea? I mean, what, what Chelsea? Yeah, I'm not talking I'm Chelsea. Chelsea. We, we, Chelsea we, we what, what Chelsea? <laughs> what, what Chelsea? Because, you know, um, why don't you say PSG will come back for him? No, why I say Chelsea? Because Chelsea have been on board, you know, for him. Well, I don't think, I don't think they are in charge of the Champions League. Um, what, what, what Chelsea? Oh, what Chelsea is playing Conference League. Conference, yeah, Conference League, you know. Yeah. Um, not the top league expected for a caliber of player like um, Osime. Uh, why, why? Only that team can come for him. But but people, yeah, of course. But at least Chelsea, why we are mentioning Chelsea is because they've they been the interest. one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, about, uh, you can, can you imagine him in Arsenal? If Arsenal comes with the big money, of course he will go. Mm. Okay. Yes, um, it's been an interesting moment on the show. We've been looking at um, the qualifiers right now, talking about the Afghan qualifiers and also not forgetting the fact that um, we're talking about Osime Transfer Saga. So much to talk about with my wonderful guests in the studio. So let us also know that right now the Under 20 World Cup is going on in Colombia. Under 20 World Cup, we started so well in the first game. We um, defeated uh, South 
Korea, yeah, I think with Tibet, South Korea um, in the first leg, and um, unfortunately, our second leg yesterday didn't go well with um, us. We lost to Germany, and the German side has always gotten a better part of us when it comes to the 20 World Cup. Just the same way we've gotten a better part of um, the South Korean side at the under 20 World Cup. So, for those asking, this is your moment to see the highlights of the under 20 Women's World Cup between Germany and Nigeria. Don't go away. Away from that, we now go to um, Joel Ujberry. Uh, yes. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Yeah, this is a focus on you right now, and I'm sure you shared your experience as regards to um, Osime. Yes, there's a chile do your name yes. that um, is not pronounced. You know, so tell us um, a bit about your background. Uh, tell me this my name because it's my father. Name. No. So you give me that name. Oh, okay. Joel is my mother's name. Oh, so okay. it's good. Okay. So so how did you start football? Your profile says so much. You've played for some underage clubs, yes. teams and all that. There was a time Ikotara Guinea was calling you to be part of um, the under seventeen team. Yes. And Joel was yeah, yeah, I dream. Um, I start I think I start uh, late. But I start strong. Okay. Uh, football is my life. Okay. I learned football from when I am small. Okay. I think that I can do it well if I train. So it's good. I started playing in, in Madrid. Okay. Uh, what, what, what stage is that, Madrid? Uh, in Leganes. Okay. Leganes on the, on the 16. 16, okay. Start. So I start working, working, and now I am here. Oh, okay, so now that yeah, um, we also have a report that Kotoa Guinea is trying to get your attention to play for them. Uh, yes, the when I when I uh, start playing, I think good football. They start calling my mother. They start calling me. They want they want me to be part of Guinea. Under seventeen. Under seventeen. And uh, no, it's not under seventeen. It's okay. the bigger team. Okay, under twenty three. Yes. Okay. So. I'm not. I am trying to to stay because I know that my father is from Nigeria. I know that I have one part of Nigeria in mm. in me. So something is telling me to wait. No, oh, oh, so okay. it's cool. So you okay? Maybe because it's Equatorial Guinea, if it was to be between Ghana and Nigeria, if you're assuming your your mother was a Ghanaian and your father is in Nigeria. No, my mother is from Guinea. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm asking this. I'm asking the question that the, you're dodging Equatorial Guinea because it's Equatorial Guinea. Yes. You know, if it was a bigger African nation, will you have said no that you want to play for your father? Like, if it's, for example, if it was um, Ghana, Ghana is a big football nation under 23, big, or it's Morocco. Maybe your mother is Morocco, your mother is Ghana, and they call you, and your father is a Nigeria. Will you say no to them? No, I think I will still. Waiting to okay. Nigeria. Yeah, tell us why you want to play for the Super Eagles. Super Eagles are not. You, are you eligible to play for under 20? No, 20, 23. 23. And yes. the national team? Yes. Okay, tell us why the Super Eagles. I don't know how to express it, but okay. it's something is telling me that I need to wait Nigeria call. Okay. Because Nigeria is something. I have something in my mind, something yeah, in my the head. Father's like, land. That is telling me that I need to play. So I, 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 I have good players. Okay. And even the country is very good country. So oh, okay. As as Nigeria beckoned on you in the past to 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 play for them, has anybody called you in the Nigerian Football Federation? Has any top person tell you come and play for Nigeria before? No. So you decide to just wait with the time. Yes. Okay. It work. The working. To keep working. So what what's presently are you doing now in, in, in uh, now I I came here to Nigeria to see my family. Okay. It's my first time here in Nigeria. Oh, first time, okay. So I am happy. I am training. I'm still training. I am here in a uh, holidays. Okay. So it's good. I am training and I still work. Okay. How about clubs? Have have clubs which offer have you been getting offer from clubs? To come and play for the for the club side. Yes, I have I have a friend in Spain, uh, out of Spain, 
but I still, yeah, I still, it's my first time, so I am taking it with relax because I need to know everybody, all, all my country, first. So okay. it's good. Uh, I'm going to ask that question, uh, maybe, like what we're seeing on TV now, now which, which club is that you've been, you've been uh, playing for? That team is uh, one team in Castilla-La Mancha, okay. uh, or Loan. From Railway Cano, I went Loan to that team one year. That's and still in Spain? Yes. Okay. All your career has been in the Spanish? Yes. Um, you've not gotten any offer um, outside Spain? No. Okay, okay. So what's the future like, you know, because, you know, sometimes the wise man says a bed in hand is what millions over there you know in the forest so what you have in and your imagination can tell you many things but it cannot be compared to what you have in your hand right now if time goes super egos because super egos is very competitive very very competitive so many uh, if a cement decide to sit down another cement will come you know yes. if um, it will be decided to sit down another will be will come you know full of talent um, but you're still waiting and I pray your dream comes true. But don't you think a bed in hand, you know, if time is going, Super Eagles is not coming and Ikutua Kine is cutting you, um, no more time, you know, football is about time, will you still go for Ikutua Kine or you still have to wait? I will, I will still believe, I will still believe in that uh, God will take the decision and he will try to, to take me inside that I will be comfortable. I still thinking that Nigeria is my Your dream. country, my dream. I want to play with that football, that football players. And even uh, Nigeria Super Eagles have one thing that all the, all the players they are working for a long time mm. to play in Nigeria team yeah. selection. So I need to still working, mm -hmm. uh, still playing football, loving football. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be uh, still young. Okay. It's, uh, I'm sure a lot of us here, I mean, we have a very wonderful player with us who has done so well for himself and also um, open to play for the Super Eagles. I'm sure he's just one in millions that um, open to play for the Eagles. But let, let, also, let's look at this. Don't you think the feelings of um, playing for a national team is the same? If the feeling of playing for the national team of a country of millions of people, whether Equatorial Guinea, whether the Spanish national team, whether the Three Lions, even the small team from Malawi national team, is a pride to to play. To, to play for the country's national team anywhere in the world, even if it's Jamaica, even if it's anywhere, you know, you sing a national anthem, you're happy because the, the player in, in in Real Madrid, you know, is happy to play for the player in Real Madrid. Yes, the player in Leicester City. You know, is happy. The player that is playing for Leicester City, don't you think? Or do you think there's a difference between countries when you play for them? Yes, country is total. Is other team. Okay. It's different team. Okay. Uh, club, you can have one uh, good spirit with them. You can love your club. I am not telling you that you cannot love it. But country is different. Mm. Country is your father or your mother or the two country. All your family country you are playing for your country you are winning for your country mm. so it's a big difference it's different now, we will not go back um, a bit to how you started um you've played for under 18 um, article atletico yes. madrid um, t tell us what the experience was like why didn't um, simone retained you why didn't you take you to the senior team from under 18 what happened at that period of time mm. I have the look that um, I play with my team, very good players. So I went with them to train with first team. I train with Simeone, okay. I train with them. But it's difficult. You need to still working, you need to still playing, uh, you need to still doing it well because it's too much competition hmm. to play. So. So what's the future like for you, apart from playing for the Super Eagles? What, 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 what club do you support? I'm sure Atletico Madrid also. Uh, I support for Club Barcelona. Okay, Barcelona. And Football Club Barcelona is my first team. So okay. I like. I want to play professional football. I and in my mind, I want to play in England. England, okay. Yes. So any, any, any league is very good. 
the vision yeah the nice. vision definitely but most people don't even get their dreams first dream that's why there's always a first choice and there's always a second choice in life so when your first dream of playing for EPL doesn't happen, you don't mind going to the championship. The championship division one. Yes. Or you don't want to say in the um, in in, in um, the La Liga, the first division in La Liga. If those other things co don't come to pass, don't you think um, you should start from somewhere before you get to your dream? Yes. But uh, they have uh, dreams. Okay. So if I if I want, I will reach decide that I want. If I still working, I will reach that decide that um, I want. Okay. So, so tell, tell us a bit about your style of play, your role model, because there's a lot of style of play out there. Football dimensions have changed. The role you play is, is it the same role you started with your career? We've seen goalkeeper become striker. We've seen defender become wingers. We've seen goalkeeper and um, strikers that started from this, but they end up like that. Tell us your, 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 your own evolution from the very start of your football. I start playing from when I was small in the same position, striker, uh, because I am big. <laughs> I am, from when I was small, I am running, I have good control of the ball, and I have goal. Goal is different. So, from, from the beginning, I am playing in that striker, number 10, every, all the position up, okay. and I can play it, so it's good. There's an end of an era, you know, just with recent, that's talking about the era of Messi and Ronaldo. You know, I, I'm, I think I'm just one of the few people that don't join the debates of whether Messi is better than Ronaldo, Ronaldo is better than... Uh, these two players are fantastic players. It's, you don't compare light with light, you know, but the world always compares light with light. They want a lighter light than light, but light is light, you know, not darkness. So, we on your own side of football, who do you think is better and who is your role model? See, <coughs> me, I'm thinking that Messi is the best. Mm. But uh, even if you ask them who is the best, or if you need to, if you, I need to take, because I see sometimes people are asking Messi or Cristiano, who is the best, uh, Cristiano or Messi? And the two are saying that they are, they are in other side of the players. Okay. Messi and Cristiano, they are not part of the other players. Okay. They are different players, and everybody knows that. Yes, so when they are different players, so why do the world compare them? Because uh, we all like to compare everything. Yeah, yeah. So we like to compare everything. Yeah. Uh, Messi is for me is the best, but Cristiano is still having my respect. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's a dream for you to be any of them. So yes. yeah, it's a dream. I understand somebody that is a Spanish. <laughs> you have seen Messi all your life. I'm sure you've seen Messi many times, and you've seen Ronaldo. So it's just like me asking um, in Portuguese. Who does he prefer uh, between Messi and Ronaldo? If I'm going to ask a Portuguese, who does he prefer between Messi and Ronaldo? The person is definitely going to say Ronaldo because he's a Portuguese. But, but it's fine. Um, let, let me come to you, coach. Um, yeah. This, this is, a, this is a, a critical time in, 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 in a player's career. Mm. One of the most critical points in a player's career is decision making. Mm. What, 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 what can you say about um, his career? so far so good and what do you think is best for him he said that Mikoto Agene has been calling him that he wants to play for his fatherland Nigeria who won't want to play for the Nigeria national mm. team the super egos the best of the best of the best of the best I've played for us yeah. our former coach um, was the best seven in the world mm. you understand our former player Gigi Okocha yeah. was one of the best midfielders in the world mm. you know when you ma when you gather 20 African players you definitely have to get um, 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 nine or yeah. from Nigeria mm. before you start looking at Samaritu and the rest we know and the rest and the rest mm. so, so tell us um, you think it's a better decision to yeah you know uh, Joel uh, has what it takes we have watched him okay. uh, play train even with his uh, former clubs um, he has what it takes in terms of uh, using his body in terms of uh, pace you know he's a good striker who can also play um as a ten. 10 you know controlling the game he knows how to gather players together mm. as an opponent 
gather them together, confuse them, and then wipe off the ball straight to his own attacker that he or seven or eleven that he really wants to uh, penetrate. Yeah, this, so we have watched him. Yeah, this is now, his name. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good player. He's he's sitting down by my side. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and Inesta because yeah. when somebody gathers player. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. He gathers everybody. He, he, he has old you. He does. And it. next yeah. thing you are doing, he yeah. take the ball away. Yes. yes. And five players are with yes. you. Yes. You know. Cut out her. In terms of decision making, this is sound mm. excellent, no doubt about it. Well, well, let me go, let me come to you. Yeah. Sorry, what, 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 where, which of the players do you see yourself in? Mm. I mean, when you watch football, I mean, I think I think that's me, and maybe this you Lukaku, know? Lukaku, oh, Lukaku, yeah. Lukaku. So, because Lukaku is playing with the body, the, okay. Now, is it the Lukaku before he removes his dread? Because of the Lukaku after <laughs> because the last Nations <laughs> Cup um Eagles, Lukaku wasn't fantastic. Um when he was in Chelsea Conte in Tamila was fantastic because he has been I mean, a little bit so so each other Lukaku. You know what happened with Lukaku? Yeah. If you watch all the matches, you will see that Lukaku is working for the team. Mm. Lukaku even if he's not scoring goals, he's working for the team mess to so score goals. Is, even if he's missing goals. Yes. Okay. He's, he's doing the things can't have so much records of yeah. missing goals. But football is, is like this. Before Lukaku was scoring all type of goals. Now he's working for the team. Mm -hmm. And he's and still scoring goals. Okay. So he's good. I like Lukaku. He's my player. Okay. Do you like um, <laughs> he's your player? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, your player. And, 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 and I don't know whether that report is true about the mm -hmm. fact that um, he refused to take um, the iconic jersey number nine of um, Osime mm. uh, because Conte actually wanted to use mm. Lukaku because what they did in Inter Milan mm. Ooh, a tested product perhaps is better with a coach than a product even if you have worked with somebody else before mm. you have not worked for me I'd rather choose a player that has worked for me mm. you understand so I think the report says that um, as it that um, he rejected the iconic number nine jersey that was supposed to be given to him because of um, the, the the omission or the uh, the fact that um, Osime is no longer there, mm. he said no, and I think he went with um, Jesse number eleven. And Lukaku is also part of the golden generations of the bird jump team. Apart from Lukaku, who, who do you always look at? I mean, player that amazed you so much. Apart of Lukaku, yeah. Apart of Messi too. Apart from Messi, <laughs> Ronaldo. Messi, Ronaldo is for the whole world. Uh, Neymar. 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 Luis Suarez. Oh, oh, okay. Those are skillful players. The workers' teams. Yeah, the workers' team. Mm -hmm. That's an um, interesting moment. What's your last name with the, the future? What's the future for you? Like, tell us what's your plan? I've been finding Nigeria. Is Nigeria with you? I mean, your first time in Nigeria. Um, your father, which of the states is your father from? It's Ibo. 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 I know yes. Ibo. Which state? Uh, he's living in Look, Lekki. Uh, the state of origin. I Imo, mean, the Imo state. state. Imo, Imo state. state. Ah, yes. oh, okay, so I'm Imo Sorry. state. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> you, you, you know more of um, the Spanish con um, Spanish than um, Nigeria. is understandable. <laughs> so you're from Imo. And um, have you been finding Nigeria? How's Nigeria been? Nigeria is very nice. Mm. The first time because when you see when you are in Europe, in Spain, and they're talking about uh, Africa, country. Africa country. Everybody thinks that it's very bad, uh, Africa is very bad, and it's not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, from the moment I reach Nigeria, I'm telling my father, oh, this is, <laughs> this this is, is different. This is a country, this is a this fatherland. Is different. This, yeah, is this is different. Yeah. And um, you've only been to Lagos? Yes. Oh, okay. On the moment. His passion is huge for Nigeria. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, so, yeah, I'm sure that those watching us, we know that um, there are so many talents um, in in Nigeria as regards to football. I want to say a big thank you to you. Thank you. Um, Chinedu, Gio, Og, Eri, right? Yes. Thank you for coming to Nigeria. And keep dreaming, you know, dream till your dream comes true. Thank you very much, um, mm -hmm. the man they call Professor Eng Wanyangu. Thank you, Sports Mudashi Administrator. Too. And we have so much of a record for what you've done to development of sports. Thank you so and much. And football in the country. Thank you very much. For I really being. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Yes, this is our time to call it um, time to leave the stage for the next program um, I'm sure you've been enjoying so much of them um, plus sport let's not forget we do this from Monday 
to Friday by 5 p.m. and you can check us on all our social media platforms. You can drop your comments, you can follow us hashtag and plus spot, um, like us on X, also follow us on X, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram for everything that has to do with sport. And not forgetting tomorrow is another time to get the best of the best of the world of sport. I'm gonna show you too. Thanks for watching. But I won't let you go without you having another good experience of the under 20 women's world cup where we played our first game between um, Nigeria, that's the Falconet and um, Korea. We won this and this is another moment to um, end the program. So we'll all be waiting for another time on Saturday um, to see what will go down in Uyo. Don't forget we'll be giving you all what you need to know in Uyo on Saturday. But for this, enjoy the rest of your day with this wonderful win between Nigeria and Korea Republic. Bye for now.